Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is the newly nominated podcast for the People's Choice Podcast Awards. So if you have a minute, and I'm going to ask you for a minute of your time, just go to podcastawards.com. And if you want the longer version, I can give you that. But it's basically podcastawards.com. Dare to Dream is going to be in the pull-down menu under entertainment. It's also in the pull-down menu under the all-time People's Choice Awards. This is pretty important. There's some uh, very noteworthy other podcasters there. And I've been doing this over 12 years. So definitely take a minute to honor the show and all it brings to you and give us a good vote. Now, it's only open to the end of this month. So please head in there. And the longer version is podcastawards.com slash app slash nominations. So well, don't need the nominations. Just as a reminder, it's only for the votes. And uh, thank you for joining us today in the number one transformation conversation. You can subscribe to this show on your own anytime you want. So it comes right in your inbox. Super easy peasy. It's on Apple and Google podcasts. It's on Spreaker, on Stitcher, YouTube, BBS Radio, Radio Public, Player FM, and iHeartRadio. And leave us a five-star review because it makes a difference. The right people will find this show and this confirm and confirmation conversation and transformation. A lot of good words that just become right in there. <laughs> so my question to you today is, have you ever had a personal integrative health coach to show you how to burn fat, boost energy, and become a person who gets extraordinary health and weight loss results. My guest today helps you do that. She helps you burn fat, boost energy, and build muscle with the ketogenic diet. However, she's got a little twist in how she does it. Tracy Gluheich, did I do that right? Yep. Yummy. Lucy <laughs> Blue Height is an integrative health coach. She's at a personal trainer. She is located in California. And in this conversation, Tracy talks about food sensitivities, keto food hacks, and her passion to help women over 50 burn fat, boost energy, and be stronger without going hungry, without having to live in the gym. She's the host of the Be Well, Be Keto po podcast, and she's also author of the book, no freaking way. 21 <laughs> days to ditch the diet and lose weight the keto way by loving yourself mm -hmm. to help. If you want to know more about Tracy and it's T-R-A-C-E-E, -E, go to highenergygirl.com. Okay, Tracy, welcome. Dare to dream. Great to have you. Ah, oh, thanks, Hi. Debbie. I'm super excited to be here. Pleasure. I am curious about two things. So I'm going to start with High Energy Girl. Why did you name your company High Energy Girl? What is that about? Where is the <laughs> high energy coming from? Well, it's kind of funny story. So essentially, that was maybe five years ago. And when I was working with a branding coach, she said, go and ask everybody, like ask like 10 people what their experience of you is. And so that was my homework assignment. So I went to yoga and went to other places and just said, if you were to give me three adjectives to define me, what would they be? And so everybody said lots of energy, like very energetic. And so I took the whole list. Like I had to give my, my coach like all the list of stuff that I did. And she's like, perfect. The big word that sticks out here is energy. And so then two funny coincidences after is I got a blood test back and my B vitamins are off the charts. And my mom's like, well, I take the B vitamins so I can have more energy. And so that was kind of funny. And then just in the last year, I've started working in the energy space. And so it just kind of all stitched together nicely. And it's kind of that red thread. That makes sense. Women over 50, why in the world is that your passion? Because I think that many women over 50 have become complacent and they are just thinking, oh, it's too late. I'm going to be, you know, unhealthy, fat, unhappy, whatever. And many of them just don't have that spark in life. They don't have the energy. They're, they're that sandwich generation. So they still have kids that need help. They still, ha and then they have the aging parents. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, what about me? 
You know, they're busy at work, busy at home, and they just need that extra oomph of love and self-care. I love in your book, by the way, no freaking way. What a great title. No freaking way. Uh, you, you, call, you, you start out with a question, are you fluffy? <laughs> that was so kind. So <laughs> how did you come up with talking to people like that rather than saying, you know, what's up with the fat? You know, you're just like fluffy. We're a little fluffy out there. Talk <laughs> about being fluffy. Have you ever been fluffy? Um, I was about 18 pounds heavier than I am now without being pregnant. I mean, of course, when I was pregnant, I was more than that. But um, yeah, I've been about 18 pounds heavier now. The word fluffy came from my dear friend that's from South Africa, who's, you know, she uses that terminology. And I just think it's super cute and soft and sweet because my goal is never to body shame anyone. Um, but I mean, studies show that being obese actually is a precursor to, to disease. And that is the portion that I want to work on, mm. you know? So like let's age in health and in strength rather than in sickness and in weakness. Right. So tell me about the premise of the book that you've got. No freaking way, 21 days to ditch the diet and lose weight. 21 days is pretty good. Well, everybody thinks that it takes 21 days to change a habit. It actually takes longer, but because of that, you know, 21 days was easy to chew. So basically what the premise of the book is, yeah, pardon the pun there, <laughs> is we want to crowd out the crap in our lives. So by feeding your body nourishing foods that are going to help you thrive, have better energy, and give you the proper micronutrients to make you feel good, you're crowding out all the other foods that are damaging your body. So you're either healing yourself or hurting yourself with any choice that you make when it comes to like food and drink and all that. And after working with so many women, I've realized that most of the reasons that they choose the other types of food, the non-healing foods, is because there's something else going on. And usually they're like stressed or unhappy and they use food for comfort, like they're bored or they're angry or they are lonely or something else is going on. So the whole 21 days is to fill your body and your life with so many good things and that it nourishes you so food no longer has that pull. Does that make sense? It makes sense. And in order to accomplish that, why keto? Because I, I really want to deep dive into this whole keto thing with you. Go for it. I'm, How did I'm you yourself, thank you, thanks for showing up in, in your willingness, because I'm like very skeptical right now, almost about all diets at this point. Um, I can tell you that I myself, do you want to shut that off? Yeah, hold on. I can't edit this, so I'm just going to keep talking and, and trust that she'll hear all of this. But here's the deal, and I'm being really transparent with everybody right now because I think it's important we do that. Um, Sorry about that. We I think that keto is really phone. amazing. I, I'm just, I've been talking, Tracy, and I'm gonna keep going here. Um, yeah, so I feel pretty broken around diets. I live in Southern California where, you know, it it is, I'm not saying it's more beautiful than other places, but I will say it places extraordinary value on one's outsides. And men and women, without a doubt. So, I mean, people really hit the gyms hard and they hit the, the extensions. <laughs> I think a lot of people have hair extensions. This is mine. You know, they have these extensions. These are mine. <laughs> I could go through a lot of body parts here, right? But you know, there's a lot of emphasis on looking good. And people, it, it's like a joke almost to go out and say, no bread, no this, no that. And then you've got another camp of people like, ah, you know, just bring it. I eat all kinds of food. And another camp of people who are vegan, vegetarian, which bless you all, I'm an O positive. It's never worked for me being vegan, vegetarian. But I have always wanted to find that happy place where my body purrs, right? It keeps its optimal weight and muscle and health, and at the same time is very easy to do out in the world on an everyday basis, because I'm quite social. So I'm curious, how did you end up in keto 
And why keto? Why is that something you believe in? And maybe you have a different twist to it I don't know about. Well, the reason was is my mom has Alzheimer's. And I started doing nutritional research for her to see what could help her brain. And I stumbled upon keto and I was very, very like, oh yeah, right. Like, forget it. I was raised in the non-fat, low fat, you know, that whole movement back in the eighties. And, but when I researched the science and really understood the health benefits, my dad's had cancer five times. My mom has Alzheimer's and numerous other conditions. And when I saw the science and how it's helping people with so many things, especially the cancer thing. And I just thought, you know, this is how I'm going to live my life. And it helps with so many things. Like a third to a half of our population is going to get type 2 diabetes in their lifetime. Cancer is on the rampant. You know, it's crazy. For sure. I've interviewed the low-carb cardiologist who had a traditional practice down San Diego. And he was not able to get his patients the results using the way he was taught in medical school. Yeah. So now he's doing the keto approach, but it was only, he, he ran into it accidentally, but he's having great results with his patients now. Mm. So for me, I'm just like, you know, I just read and study and I'm so committed to it that I very rarely go off of it. So that's why I'm convinced. I mean, my, I have cancer in my genes, I have Alzheimer's in my genes, and I am not going to go down that pathway. Interesting. And have you seen changes for yourself or your clients that are remarkable? Um, yeah. I mean, well, I lost 18 pounds pretty darn quick. And I have so much energy. I can get up in the morning, go to the gym, teach a great class, and not need to eat until, gosh, sometimes 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I feel great. I'm stronger. Every time I lift, like every week, I get a little bit stronger. And so I want to age in health and in strength and my energy levels are through the roof because when you eat traditional standard American diet, your blood sugar is on this roller coaster and you have your high highs, your low lows. And then what happens when you do that, you, you create what's called insulin resistance, which that's why as, as we age, our waistline naturally gets a little bit bigger every year because of the insulin. And so even if somebody didn't want to go full-blown keto, which I do recommend, but if they didn't, it would definitely be finding strategies to maintain like an insulin balance so they're not on the blood sugar roller coaster. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, now that you say that, I actually recall that I have information somewhere. I was listening to a podcast that was recommended to me because my mother is starting dementia. And somebody said, you really need to listen to this because it can make a big difference. And this, and I actually have it somewhere in the computer. I'd love to find it. But it's, it's a well-known person, and he's interviewed everywhere, and he lives this way. And he basically, it was about intermittent fasting and some very specific keto principles. I completely forgot about it till you just mentioned. And, he's, and my friend said, listen to this because you really need to see if your mom will do it. My mom's a vegetarian. So it's really interesting. Are there ways for vegetarians to do this? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So eggs are vegetarian, right? Cheese is vegetarian. Mm -hmm. um, full fat dairy is wonderful. Like I, for, so I broke my fast today a little bit early, but I had like grilled chicken with manchego cheese and avocado. Okay. So she wouldn't have the grilled chicken, but she could have the cheese, the avocado a big salad with nuts and pumpkin seeds and you know whatever types of crunchy vegetables it's it's very doable as a vegetarian and really keto's low low protein or moderate protein so when I work with clients they usually start off around 60 grams of protein a day which isn't a lot you can get that easily how just much is 60 eggs. grams is that like how many ounces okay so an egg has about six or seven grams of protein a day Okay, so if you use that, like Greek yogurt is another really good source of protein. So you can do a cup of Greek yogurt, full fat, healthy Greek yogurt, and get about 20 grams of protein mm. in that. And if you want to dose it up a little bit, put some, you know, um, whey, some grass fed whey protein powder in it, and you can make like you use the chocolate. There's some clean protein powders out there, 
Um, but I would do a grass-fed whey protein that's sweetened with stevia, and you can make like a little treat for yourself with the Greek yogurt and the chocolate whey protein. Okay. Totally vegetarian. <laughs> Tell me some crazy client story. Tell me somebody who's come to you who was really not doing well, and they were carrying the freaking weight, and, and they really wanted to lose it. Uh, what was the kind of work you did together, and what happened? Okay, so one of my clients wanted to exercise all the time and she only wanted to train her butt and her biceps. <laughs> and I told her to get a new trainer. <laughs> um, but she just wanted that vanity look, you know, and that's all she cared about. And she wouldn't get off the soda. And she just was like, she, she already thought she knew everything. And I'm like, why are you paying me? If you already know everything, go out and do it on your own, like save your money. And she's like, well, I just want the accountability and the support. I'm like, well, what do you want me to hold you accountable? You're not listening to anything I say. So that was, that was crazy. Like she's paying me good money to help her, but she's not, she's not making any changes. And, you know, so then a lot of people, they just want to do the cardio and they're afraid to go into the gym. So they're afraid to go into the weight room and lift. And so I have this app now that they can take with them and it will show them every single exercise and what to do on their phone. So it just takes that pressure off that they don't have to figure it out. And I'm like, plug in your headphones, ignore everyone around you because really, truly they're ignoring you too. And don't let them get in your space, stay in your own lane, you know, and just be committed to the results that you say you want. So that's the other thing. They have to focus on what they want instead of what they don't want. You know? Okay, keep going. Well, what that looks like is sometimes clients say, well, I'm not going to eat sugar today. Well, your subconscious doesn't have discernment. So all it hears is eat sugar today. Mm. So it's working on reprogramming that subconscious that I find super important. So it, I would switch that and teach them how to switch it to, I will only eat healthy things today. You know, so I will nourish my body with healthy foods. I will enjoy the movement experience I'm going to have at the gym. I will lift weights to be stronger, but always putting in the positive twist instead of a, I don't want this, or I'm not going to do that. I know you do energy stuff, so you've heard that before, right? Sure, of course. Yeah, it's very basic belief stuff, right? So the subconscious doesn't know do not or do. It just hears what comes after it. And so it says, okay, there's the menu order. Let's create that. So yeah, I understand that completely. But I'm curious when you're saying this, because the, the subtitle of what you do is without going hungry and without spending hours in the gym. Mm -hmm. so, so tell me about that gym component. How do you pull people back so they don't have to be so cray cray? So my big thing is to start with two days a week, lift heavy, full body. If you're advanced, you can do it for an hour. If you're intermediate, it's 45 minutes. If you're a beginner, it's 30 minutes. Okay. okay. Twice a week. That's it. Once we get that routine established, then we can start adding in some fun classes and some cardio, but it has to be a specific type of cardio that's going to raise your metabolism. So literally I only work out at the most um, five hours a week, but usually it's four and a half. Um, so I don't work out a lot, but I used to back, you know, in the day when I was training with this particular trainer, I would do three hours a day. Wow. You know, two hours of fat burning cardio, an hour in the morning, an hour at night, and then weights in between. It was insanity. That's like an athlete. And you were not an athlete? No, no. I was on my quest for skinny that I never made it to, <laughs> but it was just ridiculous. I, I was I was raised thinking that skinny meant I was lovable. So my dad told my mom when I was 10-ish that if you ever get fat, I'm going to leave you. And he did. And he had got on this whole new family. You know, he just married the, the, his lover, took on this whole new family. And so for myself, I had that horrible mindset and it haunted me for years and years and years. And when I realized I was, you know, chasing my own tail and not getting anywhere, I, and I was injured all the time because I ran and ran and ran. And so I thought, what am I doing? Like, this is nuts. And so I totally reinvented myself. And that was maybe, gosh, 14 years ago-ish, somewhere around there. And I decided, and one of my clients was like, I'll never forget when you said this to me. 
I decided I'm never going to be that skinny girl that I was chasing. So I'm going to be a strong and healthy girl instead. Mm. And so, and that has been a really positive experience in so many yeah. ways. Taking something really not positive that created a very definitive belief in you and uh, it, it, not only experience, but something you executed over and over perpetrated against yourself to get something that was long gone and had nothing to do with you, right? It's an aberration for somebody else, but that you could take that and turn it into something so great for yourself that you healed and then you can give to others. That's, that's pretty profound. That's the real healing journey, isn't it? Absolutely. And that's like the thing that my, one of my things I, you know, that saying that says teach a man to fish, feed him for a day, teach a man to, or give a man a fish, feed him for the day, teach a man to fish, feed him for a lifetime, teach a man to teach a man to fish, end world hunger. That's my mission with women and aging stronger is to just one by one empower them to realize that a strong body will lead to a strong mind. And, but a strong body is a lot easier to get than a strong mind, but we need that mindset for confidence and discipline and joy and relationship building and career driven, you know, whatever your career is. So it's just so helpful. So that's my mission. That's beautiful. Well, I'm going to take a quick break here and then we're going to come back. And I want to ask you about reprogramming the subconscious and the places and the spaces we're doing this is difficult including for me anything that includes an app by the way i love apps but if but i have to calculate and crunch numbers and oh lord jesus there must be something for people like me around keto so that will be a real interesting conversation easy. hey everybody right oh i love easy 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 works this is dare to dream i feature very successful cutting edge thought leaders and they have already created major goals and they're here to show you how you can create yours. What would you do if you knew that you could not fail? And what would it take for you to live completely free and bold? You can be part of this podcast. Dare to Dream loves your donations and is asking you for your donations for a dollar or a little bit more. You can go to patreon.com slash dare to dream. It's where you keep a podcast alive because in the back end, all the admin and the business, et cetera, that it takes to keep this engine going for over 12 years. It's a little substantial. So thank you. This will always be free to you. And I always appreciate your support. Go to the number one transformation conversation located at patreon.com slash dare to dream. And if you would donate, I'd be so, so grateful. And if you're tuning in after we've started, this is Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream. I'm interviewing the personal trainer and keto coach, Tracy Gluhage. She helps women over 40, over 50 who are aging become strong, high energy, fat burning phenoms without going hungry or without having to live in the gym. And if you're ready to burn fat and banish brain fog, go to highenergygirl.com. Girl. So I have a question for you, and I want to start that, that you threw in an easy, and it hasn't been easy for me, Tracy. So in the past, I have attempted, I figured out my numbers, and you can explain to people what I'm saying, but I figured out my numbers, what I should be intaking, my micro, macro, and then I've gone on to, let's say, Fitness Pal. And I'm trying every day to freaking figure out, okay, it's only supposed to be this many calories, but that many carbs, but this much fat, but that much protein. But, and I literally, I'm like, I got to a point where I'm out. I can't. I'm so easy if I get a recipe that says, have this many ounces, this many, or have a fruit, a, a, you know, one pear, one chicken, one, like that's easy for me. But anything beyond that, my mind gets overwhelmed. So talk about that. What do you do, or is there a way around this? Well, I customize the program for the individual. Love Number it. One. I always want to know what are their favorite foods. Oh, good. What foods do they hate? Mm. Okay. Because I want it to be an enjoyable experience. Do you love to cook, or do you hate to cook? You know, what, how do you like to move your body? And let's create a custom program for you that's satisfying, not too much work, and you know that you can do for a lifetime because this is not a quick fix, but it is a healthy lifestyle choice that you can maintain forever. 
All right. And the goal here is to develop something called metabolic flexibility. So say you're, you're in ketosis for say three months and you go to the movies with your mom, like I do, and <laughs> she wants popcorn. Okay. You can choose to allow yourself to have popcorn and then just jump right back on the train at the next meal. Hmm. Okay. That's called metabolic flexibility. That's not something I'd recommend at the beginning because then your body's going to get really confused, hmm. but let's, let's play around with you. Okay. Please. So what is your favorite thing to do when you get up in the morning as far as putting in your mouth, whether it's a drink or food or anything like that? Without a doubt, coffee, coffee and coffee. <laughs> Me too. And what do you put in it? Uh, you know, it depends. So I, I actually love um, high, the cream. I love the, the full on cream. However, I'm not so sure my body processes dairy very well. So I may have an intolerance to it, but I love it. And what I do instead, and I'm being very transparent, the one thing I felt, have felt energetically gets a neutral from me, Nestle makes a sugar-free creamer. And so I use that. It's actually very, very low carbs. And I know people freak out because of the fake uh, sweetener in it. But I, I don't know. I've been muscle tested, and it just comes up benign. So that's me. Coffee with that. But if I could replace it with the regular heavy cream, I'd be thrilled. Okay. Well, there's a lot of options on the market. They have like some soy or excuse me, not soy. No, no, no. Coconut, coconut, right? coconut stuff. But I use the MCT oil. Mm -hmm. Actually, you're going to kind of be surprised here because now I'm doing a lot of food rotations. I've used MCT oil for a long time and coconut oil, but now I rotate between red palm oil because I blend it in the blender, whip it up. So it's like a frothy latte. Okay. Yeah. I use, so I alternate between red palm oil, bacon fat that I just save in the fridge. I know. I saw that. Okay. No, it could be fabulous. I'm, I'm curious. And um, MCT oil. So I rotate between those three because MCT oil and coconut oil are basically the same thing. Okay. Well, kind of. Um, so, and then I put stevia drops, which they have different flavors. So they have like caramel or you don't put that much in, just a little. Okay. Um, and then cinnamon and you whip it all up in the blender, okay? And I usually do only a teaspoon of the fat, and I hit the gym in the morning right away. So I just get my coffee going, I go to the gym. So Debbie, what's the next thing you do as far as a meal or food or anything after your coffee? You know, I often do do the intermittent fasting, so I will go right to the gym, you know, no, nah, I wish I could go right to the gym. I walk my dog, et cetera, do a few things around the house, and then I go to the gym. And I don't have anything until I come back. And that's, that's good. Like, it depends. You know, it really depends. It could be at 11, 11 30, 12, 12 31, you know, somewhere in there is my first meal. And what do you love? Oh boy. I love, well, I'm going to say the funniest thing because it's so not keto, but I do love all fruits. I love, I love avocados. I love artichokes. I love, um, I do love meat. I love red meat a lot. <laughs> I do. Too. I love red meat. I love sausage. I love, um, I, do, I like eggs. I'm okay with bacon. I don't like sausage. Um, I'm kind of weird with chicken. I like tuna fish. I like any kind of seafood in the whole world. And I love salmon. Love salmon. Okay. So with that said, I would say taco salad for lunch. I make my own taco seasoning. I use grass-fed beef and I'll, I'll batch cook, you know, a couple pounds. So I just always have it to pull from because I'm busy like you. Mm. And so a big taco salad with avocado and, you know, if you don't do cheese, then that's fine. Um, I use, so I got, I got tested. So I do, I can do the sheep's cheese. So anything okay. with sheep's milk, I'm fine. No goat, no cow for now. Mm. Okay. But I love manchego cheese. Mm. So I'll make a big taco salad with full fat dressing. So olive oil on it and um, salsa and lots of avocado or guacamole or whatever. And then for dinner, and you can put like pumpkin I, seeds on it. When you say taco salad. So we're not talking about a taco. We're talking about a bowl containing lettuce and all these other goodies you're talking about. There's nothing carb-like holding it. Yes, correct. It's in a bowl. And you can put, like, I found a really good, healthy brand of pork rinds that I'll crunch up for some oh, crunch on top. I love them, yes. Okay. And pumpkin seeds, which give you, like, really good nutrients and more crunch. 
Mm. And yeah, for sure, no, no carbs in it. I also do cilantro mm. and I put a little bit of homemade fermented sauerkraut, or you can just buy like the real good sauerkraut for good, um, you know, fermented foods for probiotic use. So I make a superfood taco salad. I don't usually put lettuce in it. Um, but I might do arugula. So I want it to be nutrient dense so that the energy you get from that lasts you until dinner. Interesting. Okay. So no snacking, no snacking. And there's a couple different reasons. One is because usually I'm not hungry. Okay. Because I'm so satiated from that amazing meal that I don't want to eat. And, um, if I eat like late, like say sometimes I have my lunch at two or three, it's really hard for me to get dinner in. Um, but I do make myself cause I want that protein for that muscle building. Okay. And then dinner, here's my new favorite recipe. I take salmon and put it in parchment, spread it with pesto. And I do the homemade cause I don't add cheese in it. Kalamata olives, sun-dried tomatoes and artichoke hearts, and then bake it for about a half an hour mm. to die for. Done. Wow. Could you live with that? Oh, yeah. And you wrap it in what? The parchment paper. You know, like the little, it's just like paper and you just wrap it and then bake it. Wow. So all the juices from everything get interspersed and uh, cooked together. And it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's so good. That's crazy, man. That sounds so good. And that, so that's your day. That would be a typical day. Yeah. Yeah. And do you ever do protein bars or protein shakes? Yes, I have a brand of protein shakes that I love that has three ingredients, okay? Grass-fed beef, stevia, and cocoa powder. Really? That's interesting. What? It doesn't taste like me at all, trust me. <laughs> That's so hilarious. It's lady, like a Lady Gaga a protein shake. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so good. It's so good. And it's so clean, right? There's just three mm. ingredients. You can't find that anywhere. So, um, and then I found some bars I love. They're all on my blog. Um, like all my favorite stuff that I buy that I don't make, you know, um, but it's Julian Bakery and it's another grass fed beef product because I don't do dairy and I don't do eggs right now. So um, the beef is, is good for me, but that is also clean. And amazingly delicious. But I try not to do that. Um, I, I do shakes maybe three or four times a week. But I will take the protein powder and put it in yogurt um, as like a treat. Because I have a sweet tooth and I like that. Fair enough. But, but I'll, mix the, I'll mix the protein powder if I'm doing a shake with, now I'm doing cashew milk, unsweetened cashew milk. Um, and you can add spinach or you know things like that to it and just like, you know, pulverize it. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. I do that. And the Julian bakery bars, I just keep with me. Like I'm going to be traveling this weekend as we talked about. And so I'll just bring some bars just in case. Got it. Which is very smart. Yes. For travel, that's like everything, the plane, the airport, the, you know, sometimes getting from one place to the other, or if something is delayed. I love that too. I've, I've gone international with a whole suitcase full and it saved me. So yeah, I like that. I, all of that sounds quite delicious to me. I, I want to talk a little bit about the mindset because you've broached the importance of reprogramming our subconscious. So I'll start with this. There is a saying, uh, a quote from Rumi, which is your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. So to me, health, uh, being at, a, and I'm not saying slender, I'm, you know, I, I really get everybody's body has its own thermostat that's correct for it, and its own body type, to love whatever that is, right? And to love oneself into the best of health, the best of eating habits to really honor the temple we're in. Do you agree with that, that it's, it's, about, it's not about seeking for love or task, is actually seeking the barriers that we have built against our own self-love. I love that, that premise. I've never heard that particular quote before, but I do believe, I mean, with what I told you earlier about my experience with my own father, that that is an important step on our journey. Mm. And I also believe that by stopping to use food as filling the void, 
in your life and stop using it for anything other than hunger will help you experience the emotions so that you can process them and then let them float up into the sky. So we don't want to stuff away our feelings with, you know, food or alcohol or shopping or, you know, that retail therapy thing or whatever it is, but we want to feel the feelings so we can let them go. So many of our un- process traumas stay with us and like this little, you know, evil twin on our shoulder and we haven't released them yet. So I believe that you need to forgive others for hurting you and you need to just feel the feeling so that they go away. So that's a big step in recovery. Mm. Is reprogramming our subconscious uh, something that we can mindfully do or are there techniques that you teach that help us to supersede whatever has been in there so deeply that it's actually controlling our behaviors? Yes. I, um, so, you know, Abraham Hicks is in LA this weekend, by the way. Oh, no. <laughs> awesome. So I've learned a lot. I've read a lot. So all this all the techniques that I'm going to share with you, I'm not going to claim as mine, but they're more of a compilation of things that I've read throughout the years. Okay. Mm. Um, Cause I really respect all the thought leaders in the world that have made us all who we are now. And one of the things that I learned a long time ago is focus on what you want and you know, your vision and your goals and be very mindful of where you're going and don't look behind you. So for instance, I mountain bike and on the path, you know, if you're on like a single track and it's narrow, right? You want your bike wheel to go where you want to go. If you're looking at the cliff, your bike's going to head towards the cliff. So you want to focus on the trail in front of you. And same with race car drivers. They tell them, do not look at the wall. (laughs) You know, (laughs) keep your eye on your path. And there's a reason for that because your body will go where your eyes go, where your mind goes. That's where your, your life's going to head. And it's the same thing with our, you know, our future and where we want to go. And, you know, with Abraham Hicks, they teach you that whatever you're thinking about, that is what you're going to create. So if you're thinking, I don't want X, your body or your life is going to go and get you X. It doesn't hear the don't want. So always be focusing on that positive and where you want to go and don't look behind you. It's not, you can't change the past, just you can only change now and moving forward. Okay. And so, you know, as far as reprogramming goes, I love that whole wall thing. So I don't want to hit the wall anymore when it comes to that, you know, letting an app basically become an obstacle so much that I'm like, oh, I can't figure these macros out. I'm out. And you say you start with what somebody loves to eat. And we went over some of the things that I love, um, including wine, which we didn't get to. And I want to know how, how do you take all of that and make it for your client palatable, if you will, or easy so that it can be understood on a daily basis how to use it. And the other thing that comes up for me, I'm thinking, is when you talked about that sumptuous salad, yeah, a lot of ingredients. So I can just imagine sitting at an app and going, okay, you know, five pumpkin seeds and this much ground beef and the arugula and the, you know, cilantro is like, yikes. Talk to me about that. How do we manage it? So you don't need to track. You don't need to track at all. So if you want to do easy keto, you yes. just want to start your plate with either a big salad with full fat dressing or a thing of roasted vegetables, okay? So oven roasted with olive oil, avocado oil, whatever. And, you know, with salt, because we can have a lot of salt on keto. So like I love roasted Brussels sprouts or roasted broccoli with olive oil and garlic, or, you know, now cauliflower is a big craze, which I don't love, but I'll eat it. But I love roasted zucchini or a barbecue. You know, you have those um, like plate things that you barbecue with all the holes underneath. And we have a Traeger, so it's a wood pellet, barbecue. So I either barbecue or oven roast a bunch of vegetables in the winter. You want to eat in season. Mm-hmm. So I used to get canker sores because I love salad and I'd eat them year round. And so I started getting canker sores. So, and then in the winter, even you can do a nice pot of soup if you like with lots of, of fibrous vegetables and then just add chicken to it and add some cheese to it. 
it's like to me, if you're a free spirit and you don't want to track, don't track. If you're an analyst like my husband and you're all about the numbers, then track. But you have to make it enjoyable and simple for you. But I'll tell you, you won't go over your carbs if you do those simple things. So you just have the like the two meals of the salad, the roasted vegetables with protein. You get over your carbs when you start doing like nut flours and keto treats that have like sugar alcohols in them. And you know, the processed foods more so than if you just do simple whole foods, you will rarely go off. And you can always, if you're in doubt, I can taste ketones in my mouth. I taste a little metallic, mm. but you can always test. And if something's not working for you and if it's spiking your blood sugar, you can test it with, um, I like the blood test the best. And then you can tweak and go that way. But I like hardly never track, never. But I, I trust that I'm in ketosis. So, but I just want to make it easy because we're busy, right? Right. And can you overeat doing that? So having the salads and having the roasted vegetables, all of which sounds amazingly delicious to me. Is it possible to go way over and overeat on that or... Not so much. It doesn't happen for people. Have you ever eaten too much salad? <laughs> I sometimes wonder because I can, you know, like there are those bags at Trader Joe's, right? They're pre-made, which I, I love them. And so I'll take that out. I don't like the dressing, so they don't agree with me at all. I think they have stuff in them. But, um, you know, I can do that with my own dressing. And I seriously, I have a girlfriend who's like, Debbie, I eat half of that at a meal. I'm like, oh, not me. <laughs> I eat the whole thing. It's like a satellite dish. So maybe. How big's your serving like, bowl? Like if you were to see your bowl, how big is it? Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's nice size. It's probably family size. <laughs> I don't feel like, honestly, I don't feel disgusting after. I, I mean, salad, right? I don't feel like, mm, like an Oompa Loompa. But, you know, I've had my meal. And I think I like that feeling, the <laughs> feeling of like gusto of having eaten. So you would just test and see if your ketones, you know, if they stay, if you stay in ketosis, then it's fine for you. To me, nobody got fat off of, eat, off of eating too much salad. It's usually because they're eating too much crap, you know, cupcakes and, you know, chips and drinking Coke and, you know, that type of thing or bread. It's not from the salad. Okay. I would be hard pressed to find somebody who ate, look at, I mean, yeah, I'd be hard pressed to find that. Okay. I love this. I mean, this is a yes, yes, and a yes. And what about the alcohol? There's everything. Um, I know enough about keto from my various attempts in the past. Wine, red wine, big for me. And I know vodka quite good. And I found a couple of things that, you know, don't have a lot in them to add to the vodka. Well, how do you feel about that? Um, I live on the wine trail in South County, you know, South Santa Clara County wine trail. And I love my wine. And I often have two glasses a night, which equates to about six carbs. <gasps> Whoa. That's so great. Really? So no impact? Because you look amazing. Well, thank you. And the impact, not really? Well, six grams of carbs. Okay. So you, your body's always going to burn off the alcohol first, which is fine. Right. And then six grams of carbs, big deal. And I will save my carbs for wine. So I would rather eat. So let me see, have I had any carbs today? I don't think I've had any carbs today. I had the chicken, cheese, and avocado, which is very like hardly no carbs. Right. So maybe two or three carbs. That's it. I probably won't eat again until dinner. And I'll probably have something very similar. And then I'll probably have a glass or two of wine tonight. And it's fine. It's not, it's, it's actually healthy. There's a doctor who wrote a book. It's called The Bio Diet. And he said to me, when I interviewed him for my show, he said, you know, wine is good for you. It raises your HDL and the polyphenols are really good for your heart. And then there was a, a study that was done can't remember what it is, but by Walter Willett. And he said, the number one killer of women is heart disease. Okay. Wine, drinking wine, like, you know, moderately, not like, you know, crazy girl alcoholic thing, but moderate alcohol consumption is good for your heart. And it is shown to reduce your heart disease. Even cholesterol, all the centurions, well, the centurions, the people who live to a hundred, they have higher cholesterol than most. 
So that's something we're getting. That's a good thing that people, you know, say, oh, your cholesterol side, go on medicine. No, don't do that. So, but wine's good. I, we, we need tank tops that say saving my carbs for wine. <laughs> that's so good. Let me ask you this. Um, this is an Italian question. So on the boot of Italy is Sicily and off to the side is a little island. And um, the name of the island is very famous, is just eluding me. Do you happen to re recall what it is? Sar Sar Sardinia. Sar yes. The reason why I bring that up and what you just said sparked a little ding, ding, ding for me. As you know, you and I have talked. I'm an Italian wine specialist and a, uh, a Sicily wine specialist. Listen to me. I'm such an Italian wannabe. <laughs> and I'm a Spanish wine specialist. But when I was studying the Italian wines, one of the things I thought was so amazing, besides everything about Italy, is that in Sardinia, it has the longest living people. And here's what they have, over 100, here's what they have in common. They smoke, <laughs> they drink wine, they only eat goat or sheep products, never cow, and families everything familia it's everything and i thought that was fascinating because we would look at some of those components and say you know in this country we're so interesting with what we decide is good and bad and how quickly it changes but that is a country with some ex a country a, a region with exquisite wines and they enjoy their wines they enjoy their family uh, family meaning you know they're taken care of and they rest and all of that so they don't have dairy with cow in it it's a little different than how we think here not everybody but when you say that it's like yeah clearly many countries that we look to that are quite beautiful looking people including france wine is a big component of their everyday life yeah Absolutely. And here's the thing with the cigarettes, they probably roll their own. So they're not, you know, made in a chemical lab that has all this crap added to it. Mm. And their wine is probably, you know, oh. very healthy homemade wine. Um, their food is probably not sprayed with pesticides and herbicides and, you know, all of the chemical fertilizers that our food sprayed with. They have a holistic lifestyle. They sleep more. They take that afternoon siesta. They're not stressed out to the max. You know, I mean, and so there's, there's the food that they're taking that is nourishing their body. It's the rest that they take and the lack of stress that's creating all the free radicals in their body as well, right? They probably are spend more time outside getting more fresh air and vitamin D from the sun. So I think it's a combination of their environmental exposure plus, you know, the lifestyle that they live too. Without a doubt, what you're saying is so correct. And, you know, the additives is huge. And anyone who's traveled abroad knows one of the things, if you ask someone, I've never been to this country, how is it for you? I know that I've heard often people say, oh, not only did I love the food and eat some things I wouldn't typically eat, but I didn't gain a pound or everything agreed with me. And I certainly found that in Italy too. It's like, ugh, you know, my body was so happy when I was there. So yeah, without a doubt, agreed. Um, they don't put a lot of the crap into, into what they do, that, that we do. And, and so it's, it's nice. It's nice if this is doable, if it's done right. And what about fruit? Do you ever um, engage in fruit? Because that has quite a bit of natural sugar in it. Ah, I think she froze. Okay. Well, I'm going to go to break here while she unfreezes. We, we froze our girl. We froze our girl. Um, so funny. <laughs> but she looks beautiful. Um, she actually looks like a beautiful Celine Dion, doesn't she? A young, beautiful Celine Dion. She'll hear this in the replay. Well, folks, listen, exclusively for you, for Dare to Dream listeners only, I have a really unique deal for you that I made with Thinkific. So if you are an entrepreneur, small business, or you just want a hobby on the side, this is this is the bomb. You can create your own online course, market your own online course, sell your own online course. 
This is a powerful all-in-one platform where you can easily share your knowledge, you can grow your audience, you can scale your business, you decide. And this is whether you're educating 10 students or 10 million. Think if it gives you the easiest technology and best support in the business. I've got a, a deal that I made for you, which will give you three months of their business plan for free. I said free. So go to thnk.cc slash Deb. Here's the dealio. My products are up there. They look so beautiful. I mean, they make the landing page for you. You can sell your stuff. You can bring people there. You can affiliate market. Like they have everything. I teach classes, as you may know, all the time, like the ultimate visibility formula and so forth, where I teach people how to get booked on radio and podcast in 60 days or less. And I've got those products. I've got the how to write a book in 60 days. I've got everything there that you might want. Here's the deal. I also, because I teach classes and I want to just put my replays up there, my replays are going to become products. And what I do with my students is I create a gift code for them so they don't pay to get my products. They go in for free. I'm showing you some of the things you can do, some of the options, and there's so much more. You can shoot your videos there too. So if you're ready for a free setup to create some online courses and make some money, this is an exclusive deal for you. Go to thnk.cc slash Deb. And if you're tuning in, she's back. She's unfrozen. This is our personal trainer and keto coach, Teresi. You can find her at highenergygirl.com. And Tracy, um, we're coming to the end here. I want to ask you a couple of questions, though. <clears throat> Tell me about food testing. I'd love to know your thoughts on that. Okay, so we were just talking about Europe, and Dr. Mark Hyman in 2010, you're, you're familiar with his work, right? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. So he had a video that he said that in Europe they're doing food sensitivity testing and that the Americans are way far behind. So there's a difference between a food allergy and a food sensitivity. And do you know what that is? Are you familiar with that? Well, I can make a stab at it, but why don't you go ahead and explain? So a food allergy is an anaphylactic response. So it could be either a breathing issue or hives or itching in your throat, okay. but it's an immediate response that you're going to have to whatever food that you have a problem with. Well, mm -hmm. food sensitivity is a, delay, a delayed reaction. So you usually won't even realize that it's occurring. And so for instance, most people don't realize they have a food sensitivity until they've laid off the food and then reintroduced it because your body's smart and it goes, oh great, she's giving me gluten again. And so it will use like, what was it? It will adapt to it and it won't always give you a response. And then when you lay off of it for a few months and you bring it back, you will definitely notice that, oh boy, I guess I shouldn't be having gluten. So you can, and also some of that stuff creates what's called gut permeability or leaky gut, mm. um, food sensitivity. So because your immune system doesn't like that food, right? And so it attacks it. And I interviewed a gal who had a type of cancer that was very rare. Her naturopath traced it to a food sensitivity, or no, it traced it to an autoimmune disease, and then traced that autoimmune disease to multiple food sensitivities. And so to me, like, let's start with the root cause. So I work with a lab in the UK and we do food sensitivity testing. So it's a blood test. They test for over 208 foods. Wow. Then you get the test back and then it's the same test type that Dr. Mark Hyman recommended in that video. And so they look at your foods that reacted all the time, foods that reacted some of the time, and then foods that didn't react. And so what we want to do is remove those foods and heal our gut with probiotics, enzymes, and fermented foods. And then slowly after your gut's healed, I say six months um, for the red ones, then add one back at a time. And you're looking for an inflammation response. So yeah. for instance, so say you did that. Say you did a six-month protocol and you had no dairy. And then you decided, okay, it's Monday morning. I'm going to try dairy and see how it responds to my body. So you weigh yourself Monday morning. 
Monday, you eat your dairy, you do your heavy cream and your coffee and you enjoy it, right? Mm -hmm. Tuesday morning, you weigh yourself. Now, if you were just staying at your regular calorie thing like you had done before approximately mm -hmm. um, without picking out or something, your weight should stay stable in one day usually, right? But if you have an inflammatory response, you're going to see a spike in your scale weight, maybe two, three pounds, which signifies inflammation. Mm. So it's like, okay, well, my body's not ready to bring dairy back. So that's the best way to do it, in my opinion. And so I know that recently you came off of almonds because you were diagnosed, if you will, that you have a sensitivity there. So does that mean then for you for six months, you're going to be staying away from almonds altogether? Yes, which sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that company? It's down by you somewhere in LA called Bitchin' Sauce. No, it sounds so good. What is that? Oh, it is amazing. So it's a company, it's a sauce that's made with almonds and they have eight different flavors and it's a great dip for pork rinds or for cucumbers or for whatever. I've even put it on like roasted vegetables or like cooked meat and it gives it such an oh, awesome flavor. And um, so I... So I found the sauce at a store locally and I called the company. I'm like, hey, I want to get a tank top because I saw online they had these tank tops and they were so nice. They sent me a tank top and a bunch of sauce, so, but now I can't have it for a while. So I freezed it. I put it in the freezer. Oh, girl, I'm so proud of you. It's good. You have to suffer a little bit so you can feel your clients because that's hard. I get it. You know, when you have a sensitivity to something, I mean, I kind of feel that way about heavy cream. You know, come on, man. Like I, I'm pretty good with dairy. I don't eat it like most people do. I, I do love cheese. I will admit I, I really love cheese and, um, I'm not a big yogurt eater, but I will eat it. You know, if I remember now and then and the, the cream and yet I'm pretty sure that I get immediate inflammation from that. And it's, it's really a, wah -wah. and I've tried the coconut stuff and it's like, e it's really not as, you know, rich and fabulous. Oh right? Yeah. yeah. Come up with a, a goat heavy cream or something like that. Well, I found sheep's milk at Whole Foods. I did find sheep's milk that's full fat. And so, yeah, but the goat, I can't have goat, but I love goat cheese. That's one of my favorite things ever. Right. Right. Well, we'll have to check back in and see how you're doing after six months on your nuts and everything. Bitch and sauce, everybody. I'm going to check that out and uh, look them up. I may have to order some as, long, as well as the Julian Bakery. And I have to say, my darling, it, we are coming to the end, but it's such a small world because you have in your book a dare to dream chapter. I mean, really? <laughs> and it's like no freaking way dare to dream. So it basically says, now that you know your vision and your why, it's time to build a picture of it. Here's your dream board. I love that. So I'm going to turn it around to you, Tracy, and ask you, what is your next dream? What is your next big vision or goal that you want to create? Oh my gosh. Okay. You just created some emotion with me because I just got like goosebumps and a little choked up. So my vision is to have a women's retreat that we're on the beach somewhere and we do boot camp on the beach. We do yoga and have salad and wine and it's an empowering women's workshop. I already got the music in my head of how I want to do this and I just really want to empower women and I really believe the strength component but I also think they need more yin in their life, which is why the yoga, the breath work, that is going to be. So it's going to be like a yin yang retreat um, where we, you know, go badass and just feel powerful and strong. And then we turn to our feminine self and we can do, you know, the yoga, the qigong and, and celebrate the feminine side too. Um, so that's, that's my big dream. And then also, of course, transforming. I have this goal that, to transform 100,000 women's lives and teach them how to be an influencer in their sphere so that that can go and snowball and just create some movement. Mm. You know, we're not the weaker sex and I'm not going to man bash. I've been married for almost 30 years. It's not about that. It's just about empowering women that, that being strong is sexy and, you know, it's empowering for their mind, body and their spirit. 
Mm. Being strong is sexy. That's my tank top. You get the bitch. <laughs> I got the being strong, sexy. We'll make a good team. That's so cool. Thank you, Tracy, for sharing you, your brilliance, and all you offer us on the show today. I appreciate it. Uh, Debbie, thank you. You have no idea how awesome it is. Mm. I'm going to end today's show with this quote from Tracy's book, No Frickin' Way. Imagine how many precious moments you could enjoy more fully by being present. Imagine what you can learn from conversations if you're not thinking about what you're going to say next, but genuinely listening to your friend or child. Imagine how much joy you could experience in the simple things by actually feeling them. Life passes by fast enough. Slow down. Be present and live fully. Next week on Dare to Dream, I'm featuring Christian Minson, who's a spiritual life coach, speaker, and author. Christian is the resident director of the Breathwork Program at Rhythmia Life Advancement Center. As y'all know by now, I am going to Rhythmia this October. It is a luxury, medically licensed, advanced center. It does deep spiritual work. I am so excited. And believe it or not, with all I have experienced out in the energy healing world, I've never experienced breath work. And I've heard extraordinary things about it. So I am in, people. And you'll get to have that conversation with us. Of course, you can send any questions in advance. Please subscribe to the Dare to Dream podcast so you can hear the number one transformation conversation. Go to patreon.com slash dare to dream. And thank you so much for daring to live the most extraordinary big life. I do so appreciate you. Dare to dream.